got to go to the lonesome valley. Racism is a belief that all members of each race possess characteristics or abilities specific to that race, so as to distinguish its inferior or superior to another race or races. Discrimination is treatment of different categories of people or things on the grounds of race, age, or sex. Racism in America has been going on for hundreds of years. It has affected many different ethnic groups living in America and has scarred many people. It has evolved so much since the first Europeans settled in America, from slaves being brought to America from West Africa, to the creation of the Ku Klux Klan, and so on. Although it has gotten better over the past years, racism still exists all throughout the U.S. In most cities across the United States, there are neighborhoods that only have one specific minority group living in them. These neighborhoods can oftentimes be very tough and dangerous. The reason some minorities live in these neighborhoods is because they don't have enough money to live anywhere nicer and safer. When this gets the attention of people that are wealthier, they might oftentimes depict a certain race as poor and uneducated. During the 1960s and 70s, the Civil Rights Movement caused many African Americans to go on marches and riots all throughout the country. This caused a lot of anger toward people that were white, but especially people in the South. All of these riots and marches had to do with segregation and equal rights. A good example of this would be the Montgomery March, which took place March 7, 1965, in Montgomery, Alabama. There were hundreds of police officers stationed all over the area with high-powered weapons. Sadly, racism and discrimination still exist today in the U.S. For example, the largest demographic in the prison population today is African Americans and Latinos. They are also less likely to graduate from high school and more likely to live in poverty. It is also harder for them to find employment. For example, currently there are exactly 841,000 African Americans in custody. In 2011, African American males made up 13.6% of the U.S. population but 40.2% of the prison inmates. Hispanics make up 20.6% of the prison inmates, although they are only 16.3% of the U.S. population. Using these statistics, Caucasians make up 70% of the U.S. population, but they make up about 30% of the prison population. At the same time, the Ku Klux Klan that has existed since 1868 has changed. Yet, the modern-day KKK is still a strong group. For example, since the election of President Barack Obama, the first African American president in U.S. history, they have expanded their efforts to recruit new Klansmen in order to bring white supremacy back to the country. Racism has been in this country for hundreds of years. During the colonial period, there were many conflicts between the natives and the English of obtaining native lands. Much of the land the English wanted had already been taken by the Native Americans. The result of taking these lands from the natives ended in wars, massacres, and forced displacement. The Choctaw tribe in Mississippi described their situation in 1849. We have had our habitations torn down and burned, our fences destroyed, cattle turned into our fields, and we ourselves have been scourged, fettered, and otherwise personally abused until by much treatment, some of our best men have died. In colonial America, thousands of African slaves served European colonists. On rare occasions, for some African slaves, a term of service meant freedom and a land grant. But things like that were never usually rewarded. That is how a few former slaves became landowners. In general, Many African slaves lived under horrible conditions. Slavery was a method of organizing labor to produce sugar, tobacco, and cotton. To the Europeans, the good thing about having a slave rather than a servant is that they never had to pay the African slaves any money. Black slaves worked on plantations in small groups all throughout the 17th century. So, have you or um, any member in your family been affected by racism?
Um, yeah, I would say that um, every member of my family has been affected by racism, um, directly and indirectly. I think um, for myself, on a lighter scale, I grew up born in Marin, grew up in Marin, went to private school, and I don't think I necessarily saw or felt any racism against myself until I was in third grade and moved to Novato. And that's and I actually transferred later on to a public school in sixth grade, no, or after sixth grade and seventh grade. And um, then I would see a lot more. I saw a lot more, uh, there's a lot more name calling. Um, with me personally, it was a lot more joking. You know, uh, my background is Mexican, so things like beaner, I think spick was a common word used. Um, I think it was directed at me more to rile me up than to really feel like a derogatory term for me. But, uh... There have been many obstacles to end racism, including a strong resistance from people who do not want things to change. In 1896, the U.S. Supreme Court endorsed segregation in Plessy v. Ferguson which established the separate but equal principle. In a study commissioned by the NAACP in the 1930s, Nathan Margold found that under segregation, the facilities provided for blacks were always separate, but never equal to those maintained for whites. There have been many efforts to end racism. For example, the civil rights movement that took place in the 1960s is a perfect example. People like Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, Malcolm X, and even Jackie Robinson became civil, right, civil rights activists and did everything they could to end racism. Another example would be groups that help different minorities. For example, the NAACP, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, is to ensure the political, educational, social, and economic equality of rights of all people and to eliminate race-based discrimination. Another organization is the Southern Poverty Law Center. The Southern Poverty Law Center is a nonprofit civil rights organization dedicated to fighting hate, bigotry, and seeking justice for most vulnerable members of society. Students can help by learning about the situation and its history and then educating other students about the problem so they can do something about it. The more people that are aware of the problem, the better it is going to get. I can help by educating students about the problem of racism and having them do something about it so they can end it for good.